Hi, I'm Professor Bei Dong from USF School of Accountancy. Today, we're going to cover some topics related with depreciation, impairments, and depletion. In this audio, we're going to talk about the presentation and analysis of property plan equipment and the natural resources. In terms of presentation of those information related with property plan equipment and the natural resources, okay, the following four pieces of information are required by SEC. Number one, depreciation expenses. Of course, if we're talking about natural resources, it is called depletion. Number two, acquisition cost. Number three, accumulated depreciation. Number four, the depreciation method that you use to calculate those depreciation expenses or natural resources depletion expenses. So here's an example from Cisco. In Cisco's 2005 balance sheet, the disclosed information related with property plan equipment, and particularly here, they only disclose what we call you know, network value of the property plan equipment. For example, in 2005, network value is 3320 millions of dollars. Okay, so there's just one line item on the face of the balance sheet. So we could ask lots of questions, okay, for this number. For example, what is the original historical cost? What are those assets? What is the accumulated depreciation till 2005? What are those, you know, depreciation methods you use? Those questions will be answered in the footnote related with this line item. We're going to talk about in the next slide. So here's the footnote of Cisco's related with the line item, property plan equipment on the balance sheet. Okay, so they provide more detailed information, more detailed explanation of the line number here. For example, they listed all these asset they have. They put all these assets into different buckets and they disclose their acquisition cost. And then they talk about the total accumulated depreciation amortization. Then using the historical cost minus the accumulated depreciation amortization, they get the 3320 millions of dollars. This is the number we see on the face of their balance sheet. And in this little paragraph over this schedule, they disclose some other information. For example, the Depreciation method they use is straight line method, and they use different estimated useful life for different buckets of the asset. For example, 25 years are used for buildings, 30 to 36 months are used for computer equipment and related software, 5 years for furniture and fixtures. Okay, so all these estimates information are disclosed in this footnote. Talking about analysis, okay, a very interesting type of analysis we could do is to do this RA analysis. RA is abbreviation for return on asset. Okay, it equals net income plus after-tax interest expenses divided by average total asset. So this ratio measures how well the company uses asset to generate income for both creditors and shareholders. Net income goes to the pocket of shareholders. Interest expenses is the return to the creditors. So this ratio measures for every one dollar total asset how much return this company can actually contribute to both of its creditors and shareholders. Of course, we want this ratio to be high. And to be able to understand this ratio, we could actually disaggregate RA into two buckets or two ratios. One is the profit margin ratio. The other one is called total asset turnover ratio. This disaggregation tells people that these two ratios actually will affect the changes in RA. Or put it another way, if a company wants to improve their RA, they could improve their profit margin ratio and or at the same time improve the total asset turnover. Talking about the profit margin ratio, it equals net income plus after-tax interest expenses divided by sales. So it simply tells people that for every $1 of sales, how much net income and interest expenses can be squeezed out of it. So this ratio measures the company's ability to control its expenses relative to its sales. Okay, If you can control your cost, you can squeeze more returns out of your sales. Of course, we expect expenses to grow slowly than the sales. A high profit margin ratio is preferred to a lower one. So um, this is a little gross profit margin analysis for Cisco. We can see that from 2003 to 2005, 
sales revenue increase, cost of goods sold increase, gross profit in raw numbers increase, while the gross profit margin in terms of percentage decrease. What happened here? So in this little case, we can see that the reason the gross profit margin decreases is because you know sales increase cannot catch up with the cost of goods sold increase. So this company from this particular analysis, we can see that they have some cost control issue. The second part of the ROA model is this total asset turnover. It equals sales divided by average total asset. So this one indicate how much sales revenue can be generated from every one dollar of average total assets. So it measures the firm's ability to generate sales from a given level of asset. Of course, we want this ratio to be high. That just means that firms is very efficient in terms of you know generating sales revenue from every one dollar of total asset. As a little summary, we you know look at RA. We break RA into two buckets. One is the profit margin ratio. One is its total asset turnover. As a manager, if you want to improve your RA, you want to improve your gross profit margin and also improve this total asset turnover.